Welcome to week two of technology, life balance and addiction at City of University. Um, I just wanted to give kind of a summary of the materials for this week really is in the quote um, that originally was attributed to um, Father John um, Colkin, but also a lot of people attribute it to Marshall McLuhan. And that is that we become what we behold. We shape our tools and then our tools shape us. So the idea um, in a lot of the reading and a lot of the videos for this week was that um, our minds are actually being changed by technology. As, as we play video games, as we use media, um, the, the technology itself is changing our mind, uh, um, how, how our minds operate. Um, the video um, called The Shallows really looks at how our attention span is um, being affected by um internet media because people are just used to always getting things instantly and also you know there's signs that that may also be related to the the growth of um, ADHD um, and things along those lines so um, you know there's the old saying you are what you eat right um, well I guess this is the media version of that that you become what you behold um, so let me just go into tying together the content from the first um, week with the content um, from this week. So, you know, the first week talked about how there's this monumental shift happening in society. You know, there, originally there was the transition from rural to urban, and that created a, a need for a lot of new things. Um, and one of the things that that created is, you know, whenever you're on a farm and you're working with your muscles uh, 12 hours a day, there's not really a need for exercise. There's also not as much of a need for a focus on nutrition because all the foods that you're eating are um, very wholesome. Um, but then you move into an urban environment and um, all of a sudden, you know, there's this huge need for exercise and there's also a need for, you know, nutrition because um, our uh, food has become industrialized and a lot of the nutrients have actually been stripped um, from it. So um, there's a similar transition that's happening um, in the transition from urban to the online digital. And I would say there, you know, from rural to urban, it was about physical health. The urban to online digital, it's really about mental and emotional health. And we need to get new tools for mental and emotional health. So, you know, the obesity epidemic that the United States and the rest of the world's facing um, is largely a consequence of both of these transitions. The rural to urban, we're, we're not exercising anymore, but then instead we're, you know, sitting and, you know, spending more time, um, you know, in digital media. Um, so we, but, you know, a lot of the response of that is going to need to be exercise and nutrition, but there's a similar thing in, on kind of the mental level. So that's what I'm going to focus on this week. And I want to start with a little bit of a story. So I grew up in Kansas City. Um, Kansas City used to be um, considered the obesity capital of the country, um, where it had the highest rate, uh, per capita rate of obesity anywhere in the country until some cities, I think, in Texas took over. Um, but people from Kansas City take pride. Um, and, you know, if being from Kansas City, you're in the most obese nation or one of the most obese nations in the, in the world, and you're, you know, coming from the most um, obese city, and I grew up in the inner city. So, you know, we ate horribly, and I took pride in that. And, you know, food is very tied to culture. Um, so, you know, I, I uh, got into my 20s and, you know, 30s, and it was fine for, for me to eat horribly. But, um, you know, funny thing happened. In my mid-30s, I had kids, and um, my energy level just wasn't keeping up with, you know, working full-time, having kids, and I got to the point where really my body just shut down. I, I couldn't get through a day without taking a nap, so there was a, a several-year period where I could barely function in terms of I couldn't get through a day without taking a nap, and I realized something's wrong, so I go to the doctor, and he asked me, you know, what are you eating, and I told him, you know, and he, they, they look at me a little bit horrified. And I, I, I realized that this nutrition thing actually is catching up to me. Um, so I made a radical shift in my, my life. I spent, um, you know, really the past three years learning about nutrition. Um, I, uh, you know, went from being one of the worst eating people that I've ever met to being, I would say, reasonably good. Um, you know, probably three quarters of the foods that I used to eat, um, 
I stopped eating and, uh, you know, eat much more nutritious foods. And I got on a lot of supplements. And the end result was that now I can say that I, I have literally twice the energy um, that I had before. I'm exercising and, and, and doing all, all those things. And I'm happier. Um, I can keep up with my kids. And it's made a big difference. So I want to use that story kind of as analogy for what's happening in the digital world. So, you know, in, in the, um, if you look at, you know, what people say, um, you know, you're supposed to eat, and this is one of the more modern, um, you know, food pyramids. Everyone's seen the food pyramids and a lot, there's a lot of controversy around them because a lot of the food pyramids are influenced by the, the food companies. Um, but this is one that is, you know, I think fairly a good model. Um, and it says, you know, the foundation needs to be exercise and, you know, diet portions and weight control. And then um, the next layer, you're going to have vegetables and fruits, healthy fats and oils. And a lot of people think all fats are, are not healthy. And then some whole grains, not a lot of whole grains. Um, and then uh, having a lot of protein is good, a smaller amount of dairy, and um, very limited on sugary things, sugary drinks, um, refined grains, white rice, white bread, white pasta, um, processed meats. Um, and following this, you know, can make a big difference for people. Most people get that concept, but there's another concept for people to get. And that's really the concept of of what I would call the media nutrition pyramid. So here, the foundation there is is actually real life. You know, we are not virtual beings. We live in the real world. So, you know, the summary of the Bible is love God, love others. And, you know, in that you're supposed to love yourself. That's what, you know, the Sabbath um, is, is not just for God, it's for you. Um, so... Um, the foundation, I think, really is in-person relationships, and that's where we exercise all these other things. Um, that's the equivalent of, of exercise. So then, you know, what's the equivalent of fresh fruits and vegetables? Really, there, I would say that's media that you're using for growth. It's, you know, the Bible. It's Christian content, Christian music, you know, worship. Um, it's uh, media that you use for education, you know, whether it be reading or educational videos. And it, it's doing work, um, you know, using media and in, in work to... Um, whether that's, you know, working at home, um, you know, tracking your accounting or whether that's um, or your, your bank statement or whether that's, you know, a lot of people, you know, work at desk jobs where they're working at computers. So all those things generally are media for growth. Um, and then you have what's neutral media. And, and part of what I realized with nutrition, whenever I started working with nutritionists, the, the key is you want to maximize the good and minimize the bad. But the biggest area you actually have to gain is what, what's called empty calories, where the majority, I would say probably 90% of my calories used to be just empty calories. I got calories, but there's no nutrients. There are no vitamins. It was just empty um, calories. So really, that's where we lose um, things in, uh, with our media. So, you know, we have media that's maybe not bad, not good. Um, and but we just waste our time with it. So some music, um, some games, some news, and you know possibly some, you know even uh, you know videos and, and things along those lines. Social media, um, but it, we're essentially not. It's not helping us grow. It's not damaging us. Um, and then on t at the top you have you know what I would call as empty entertainment, and that's something that. You know, I think actually belongs in people's diet. You know, we're supposed to be enjoy the world. We're supposed to experience pleasure. Some people, you know, avoid all pleasure. And I think a, a good plan of nutrition doesn't say you never have any dessert, but dessert should be at the top of the pyramid. It shouldn't be um, at, at, at the core. And there's one other category of media that you have to look at that really doesn't even belong in the food pyramid, and that's toxic or addictive media. And ultimately, with any toxic or addictive media, you want to stop. Um, doing that. So having this analogy of media nutrition and the same things that you apply, the same concepts that you apply on, you know, nutrition for your, your health apply towards your mental health. So, um, you know, if you are what you eat, then 
um, you know, there's this the spiritual analog to that. You know, you become what you behold. So if you're staring at um, an image for hours a day, you're essentially worshiping that image, and that's going to um, you know affect you. And there's the question of, of how is it shaping you? And, and there's been times in my own life whenever this has happened. There's been times, you know, there's a time whenever I played the game. I Just after college, I played the game Civilization. I got so addicted to that game. I started playing it at 5 o'clock on Friday, played it till 4 in the morning, um, went to sleep for two hours, got up, and played until 3 in the afternoon. Hadn't even eaten. I was still, you know, not dressed. And I was about to pass out because I didn't even realize what time it was. You know, I got completely addicted to that media or, or that, that game. And the next day I felt like I, I woke up and I felt like, you know, I was hung over from, you know, drinking too much. And it's because it was a toxic experience with the media. You know, I, I don't believe that you can have any addictive interaction with media that's not going to be toxic in the end. So if there's a strong pool, you, you have to get rid of it. And that's one of the things we do in, in my family. I've, I've taught my Kid, my kids from the age of four, you know, if they get addicted to a game, it's gone. Um, and they they hold me accountable to it, where there's a game where I, you know, play a little bit and I got addicted to it. And um, my, my son said, you're addicted to it. And I thought he's right. And I uninstalled it. And it, it hurt because I was really addicted to that game. <laughs> so there's been other times whenever I just, you know, right after college, I had too much time on my hands and I wanted to uh, you know, didn't know what to do with it. So I just spent tons of time watching videos, um, you know, binge watching. Um, you know, there's a reason why they use the term binge watching and it sounds like binge drinking, right? So, um, so we have to balance our media usage. And I, I, I would say that I've gone through a transformation on media usage. You know, I, I've been an avid gamer. I've, you know, watched a, a lot of things and I've gone through a transformation on media usage, um, almost as radical, um, as, um, what, what I have with food. And I, I would say, you know, this is really a reflection of my life right now, um, this, this diagram. And I, I, I believe that that's, you know, this is what God would have for us, you know, spending most of our life in the real world. But if we're going to use media, use it to help us grow. Um, so, you know, there's some principles that you can use um, that, you know, nutritionists teach you about healthy um, uh, eating. And, you know, the number one thing is you, you don't fight the battle um, after you get the Oreos at home. You know, if you buy a case of, of Oreos from BJ's, you're going to eat the Oreos. Um, really where you fight the battle is whenever you go shopping. So, you know, they, they teach you make sure you're completely full before you go shopping. The other thing they teach you is, um, you know, you avoid the middle area. You just shop on the outside because the middle area is where everything's processed. And, you know, by doing some techniques like this, I was able to lose 50 pounds over that period in, in addition to, um, you know, in, increasing my energy. So there's the same type of principles that apply in using devices. So um, different media types and different devices really influence the availability of healthy media. And I, I want to create some associations that will help you think about, okay, how are you spending your time? Um, because, you know, it's possible to get healthy food um, from unhealthy places, but it's a lot harder. So, so here's an association I want you to think about. So if you're getting your media from television, it's like getting your food from fast food. So is it possible to eat healthy food at fast food? Well, maybe if you try really hard. You know, I used to go to McDonald's at the beginning of my, my diet change. I used to go to McDonald's and I used to order their salads. And I found out that their salads actually have no nutritional value for the most part um, because they they use iceberg lettuce and um, so you know you're not getting negative food that, that hurts you but you know at best it's it's really hard to find you know any good food from fast food and that's the same thing with television you know most of what you're gonna get from a television is gonna be it's gonna be like fast food it's gonna be junk it's gonna be um, you know mindless entertainment and that's good, but it's, you know, it's sugar. Um, so, you know, if you're getting all your nutrition from television, then that's like getting all your food from fast food. And if you went to a nutritionist and you said, I'm getting all my food from McDonald's, um, you know, some of you have seen the the movie Super Size Me, and, you know, that didn't go well for the guy um, because he got supersized in the end. So, and, and what this is doing is it's, it's creating, you know, the same thing mentally as, as we... Um, do that. So a computer is a little different. I would say a computer, the analogy you should think about is a supermarket. So, you know, I got most of my food at a supermarket. 
Um, but I got all the junk food from the supermarket. Um, now, whenever I go to the supermarket, you know, I do try to stay on the outside and I get healthy food. So, you know, you can use a computer for good. You can use it um, for for just watching, you know, mindless videos. Um, you can use it for, you know, mindless uh, social networking. You can use it for bad. You can get toxic stuff through the computer. Um, but really, it depends um, on what's there. But the media type itself can affect things. So, um, and then the third thing I would say is if you have tablet or smartphone or some sort of mobile device, I would say that's more analogous to a convenience store. Now, most of the time whenever, or I would say daily trips, most of the time whenever you go to a convenience store, usually you're not getting the best food. Um, but you can, and actually, you know, some of the best food you can get is if you go on, on daily trips, maybe not just to a convenience store, but you go daily trips to, um, a deli or someplace that has fresh fruit and, and, um, vegetables, and that could help you eat a lot better. It's the same thing with a tablet or smartphone. There's tons of educational things on tablets and smartphones. So if you really try, then you can get that healthy, um, you know, ma material. You know, you can get tons of sermons, podcasts, um, you know, good educational videos. Um, but most of it is what you would find in a convenience store. It's just stuff that's going to be quick um, and, and keep you satisfied. So, you know, the idea is that we want to have a healthy food pyramid. We want to be making healthy choices. We want to be shopping at the good places to get our, you know, media consumption. Um, that's one of the principles to, to learn. But the problem is that most of us have a, a food pyramid that looks a little bit more like this. So um, this is uh, what someone said the food companies were proposing to, to be the, the food pyramid where you can see, you know, McDonald's, KFC. And, and I know some of you are probably laughing looking at this because this is probably what your food pyramid um, looks like. So McDonald's, KFC, and, and Burger King make, make the foundation. Then you have Snickers and Skittles and, uh, you know, sugary yogurt or ice cream. And then you have Coca-Cola and, you know, uh, refined bread. And then you have, um, you know, good thing you're getting your fruit from Starburst. So, um, that's not what we're trying to do in terms of, um, in, in terms of, uh, you know, nutrition. And the same thing really is happening with the, the media nutrition pyramid. If you look at the way most people, the average American is consuming media, I would say it looks a lot more like this, where, um, you know, they haven't taken the toxic or addictive media on the table. And that's actually the majority of their, their media. You know, if you look at pornography use, um, if you look at people who are addicted to games, people who are addicted to social networking, um, the majority of the media use um, is what I would say it's in a category of a poison. It may not be a poison that's going to kill you quickly, but it's going to be more of a poison that's going to kill you slowly. You know, people who, who die from, you know, drinking alcohol, it's a, it's a poison. Um, if you, you consume too much of it and you'll, your liver will shut down and, um, you know, things won't work right. And it's the same thing with your brain if you're taking in toxic and addictive media. And we'll get more into the details of how some of this to toxic and addictive media, it makes the exact same changes to your brain that being addicted to cocaine does. Um, and we'll talk about that later. And then you have what I would say is sugary media. media. Um, and, you know, most people, that's what they're spending their time on. If you look at how people are, are using media, it's spent on um, empty entertainment, watching TV, um, you know, then neutral media and, you know, media for growth. You know, you a lot of Christians, might they might do that on Sunday. They listen to worship music on the way to church and, and from church. Um, and, you know, they might, uh, you know, read their Bible once or twice a, a week. And then, you know, the in-person relationships where you're not involving media, um, you know, your, your, your time, and this is the way, it, you know, used to be in my family. And sometimes it is on, you know, bad days, <laughs> um, where, you know, the only time you spend with your family is around television, which really doesn't count, um, as, you know, relating to other people. So this is not the media nutrition that, that we want to have because the end result of this is, um, you know, as we, we become as we behold, you know, or if you look at what the Bible says, you know, it says, for as a man thinks, so is he. Um, so that's Proverbs 23, 7 paraphrased. And ultimately, we become spiritually obese. So if we're focusing all of our time on these this media, um, then we 
have encountered spiritual obesity, and in some cases, this stuff might kill us. So um, a lot of this course is going to be to help you go through a plan yourself, whether or not you're spiritually obese. You may be spiritually the most fit person. You may have the most fit use of media um, out, of, out of anyone, but you know, getting a systematic plan that you can go through yourself and then take other people through it. So the steps we're going to go through in this course, um, number one is getting a media nutrition plan. And what we're going to do is we're going to have you log media usage. That's uh, You're going to do that for the assignment this week. Then later in the course, you're going to set goals, boundaries, and what we're calling tiny habits. And um, then after you do that, then we're going to log the media usage again. Um, and then we're going to um, you know, encourage you to continue a, a lifestyle of healthy media nutrition. And, you know, each week for me, I'm, you know, in, in my own mind, I'm thinking about how can I have more healthy media? Um, you know, I, I replace mindless stuff on my commute with sermons so that, you know, that time in my commute, um, it, it's bringing me up or educational videos or things that, you know, need to, need to learn about. Um, and then, so that's, that's part one. And, and some of you, you know, most people in the United States, I say, are, are addicted to something. Um, you know, whether it's food, and this is Christians included, whether it's food or pornography or even that silly Facebook game um, or the mobile game. Um, you know, however minor it is, I would encourage you to go through some sort of recovery plan. And there, there's really three steps. Um, it's So the three steps of the recovery plan are to establish accountability, participate in a recovery group, and one of the assignments we're going to have you do, and you know, a lot of you probably have been in recovery groups or counseling before, um, but we want to make sure that um, everyone ha has gone and at least visited a, a recovery group, um, and, um, and, you know, and then the assignment is going to be to, to reflect on that, um, and then, you know, and recovery plan would be to, you know, continue as, as needed. So. Um, but the idea is we want you to be able to point people to, to resources. Now, not everyone here is going to need, you know, something like that. But, um, you know, we believe in, you know, teaching people what we've experienced. So we want you to, um, you know, go through that. So the next part, I'm going to go through um, this week's assignment. So um, there's actually several elements um, of a, a media um, diary log um, that that you're going to be going through um, and I'll kind of talk you through these these different elements so um, with that I'm going to go ahead and pull up the media diary log and I'm going to kind of talk you through um, the actual assignment for that um, so in the the media diary log so this week's assignment so it, it's your week two assignment um, there's a bunch of different steps that you go through. So you're going to download this spreadsheet. You're going to download um, the narrative document. So they're linked here up up at the top. So the, the spreadsheet's one of the documents, and the other one is the narrative document. It's going to look like this. Um, so you're going to download both of those. And then what you're going to do is in step one, you're going to change the date to be whatever date you're starting your um to, to track so you know say you're going to start it on uh, 529 so you just type 529 and then oops 529 and then it's going to update the other days for you automatically um, then the um, some of the other steps that you're going to do sorry um, is you're, you're going to um, go through and for each day that what, what you're going to do is you're going to write down your media usage so um, so in this example, what I've done is, and you're going to have to estimate, but you know, do, do your best. If you watch one hour of video, you're going to write down one hour of video, one hour, two hours of audio, um, one hour of print. So this, this is by media type. Um, then there's hours by content type. So you know, if you listen to worship or Christian music, or if you did educational, you, you, you know, using a computer at work, that counts as... Um, media usage. Um, so having live interpersonal interactions where there's actually media involved. So, you know, that's going to be um, through phone, through, you know, video, um, and then news, social media, music. 
and then the the other category is going to be consuming media and producing media and then the most important really is going to be by nutritional value so it's you know and you're going to have to categorize this so um, it's nutritious media that builds you up and you know I, I put some guidelines potentially of things that build you up but you're going to have to be the judge of that um, you know if if you're watching um, you know 12 hours of sitcoms and you're saying that that builds you up probably not right that at best is going to be empty media um, that's neutral or possibly you know sugary media that, that drains you um, a lot of people I think are going to try to say everything is empty media um, let me tell you my guideline on on this is um, you know it it's is it building you up or is it tearing you down either mentally emotionally so I I play video games and sometimes and some games really stress me out you could call that being neutral but those are actually I would say sugary they're they're adding stress to my life there or if you're watching a TV show and it's you know something that has a lot of uh, you know stuff that's gonna drain you or have what, what's called toxic hits um, where you know it might have a lot of scantily clad you know people in it or a lot of sexual situations um, you know if, if it feels you leaves you you know worse off than, than when you you got it then that's gonna be sugary media um, and then toxic or addictive media is gonna be you know that that game you play on your cell phone that you're doing um, you know in the bathroom or you know at all times you know keeping you up at night or um, you know whenever you should be um, paying attention to your kids um, or it could be pornography so you know I don't need to know what what the type of media is um, I'm gonna assume the best you know with with, with people um, but the idea is that you know you you track that now what's important is each of these you know if you're in media 20 hours for the week then it should be the 20 hours for all of these so for each of these the total um, should be the same so you can see in this one 13.75 13.75 um, and th there's this section here that says this line should be zero so where it says this line should be zero if that's not zero what it's saying is that your totals don't match up um, now there's another category called producing media or consuming media so you're consuming media television you know radio audio um, producing would be you're creating a document at work or it might be that you're tracking your finances and and you know quicken at home so so that's your your producing um, rather than than consuming um, then at the bottom you the, the total of total waking hours um, in media is something that will auto calculate then you have your total waking hours. So if you slept eight hours, you'd have 16 hours that you're awake, right? So you need to fill in that. And then it's going to calculate again your total non-work hour. Or you, you're going to need to calculate your total non-work hours in media. Um, in most cases, it'll actually calculate it for you. It's going to take your work media time minus your all media time, and it's going to tell you how much you had. So what that's going to do, it's going to calculate your, the percent of your time in media and percent of non-work hours in media. So what you're going to do is you're going to complete this seven days in a row. If for some reason you forget to do it for a day, just skip the day. And, and you know, it's more important that it's, it's you know, roughly accurate than um, that is seven days sequentially. But it's best if you get seven days sequentially. And then we're going to see the total. So the key thing is, you know, these hours by media type, you know, whether you use audio or video, that really doesn't affect your nutrition. Um, to a certain extent, it can be affect you know where where you're shopping if you're watching you know things in, in TV all the time. Um, what what's important is this yellow section. And later, what we're going to do is we're going to go through and have you do a media nutrition plan. Now, for most people, the easiest way to track their media log, um, media diary, will actually be to first go through and to journal it. So you would do something. You'd say, you know, I got up. And I, I use this example. I got up and I checked my email for five minutes. Then I listened to music for 30 minutes in my commute. Then, you know, you can talk about like if you went to work and you use media at work. So you would, you would just do it in a narrative format for each day. So I would recommend that you start it that way. 
and then you use that to populate um, the actual spreadsheet because you know you'll have to think about okay was that music I was listening to on the way to work was that neutral negative positive and you know we're not trying to be legalistic or be the judge it's you know you you decide on it um, and and then um, and, and the idea here is and I realize that most people are going to try to be on their best behavior while doing this but really what we're trying to do is we're trying to get a what is your typical media usage and then we're going to change um, and, and we'll have you do goals and then we'll see you know how that changes um, and it'll, it'll kind of be a lesson um, for this course at the end of the week there's a part of the assignment where you need to do a one-page reflection so um, you know reflect on what you learned through the process of tracking media you know it may be that wow I spent a lot of time that I didn't think about you know doing uh, this type of media it may be that you feel like your pat your your media use habits are, are pretty good um, but you know write that reflection and ag again the goal is not just for you but you you know in the future if you work with people who are technology addicted getting good media nutrition um, is going to be something essential so you're going to go through this exercise so you could take other people through this exercise because addiction doesn't happen overnight just like a heart attack doesn't happen overnight addiction happens because people have poor nutrition so that you know where you want to start with this is on on media nutrition and then there's other tools that we're going to use later on recovery so with that I think that's all that I have for week two if you have any questions you can um, post to um, send, send me an email or contact me through um, the course system and I'd be glad to, to answer but I'm, I'm really looking forward to um, seeing what what you're doing in terms of um, tracking your media usage um, and oh, one other thing I was just going to make clear is the assignment this week is to start the tracking you actually submit it um, in, in week three so um, you know you should start the tracking before the end of this week um, because if you don't do that then most likely you you know if you miss a day then you're not going to have the seven days that you need so um, and one more reminder is be sure that you are going out and um, looking for a local recovery group meeting um, because you're going to have a paper you, you need to visit that and you're going to have a paper to write um, reflecting on that that's due week six so I know it may take some of you some time to get that scheduled um, but I want to make sure that that you are looking for that and planning that um, right away so you're able to do that um, in time to submit that paper in, in week six.